What up? <sighs> I know I'm a little bit late. Well, I'm always late. You guys know I'm always late. I'm always late in real life, too. Hi. Today, it's really not my fault, though, that I'm a little bit late. I was arguing with the bank. Hi, Clarissa. Hi, Desmond. Hi, Chris. You hung over? Hi, Ebony. Hi, Jaheem. I see you. Hi, to no good. Hi, Acrylic Rose. Haven't seen you in a while. I was arguing. I was arguing with the bank. They try to play me. And I have a. I will go, white lady, real quick. What? I be calling. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, I need to speak to somebody. Hi, Prince Lucini. Hi, Crystal. Yeah, we haven't seen you in a while either. Hi. Oh, Harlem. Where you live in Harlem? Oh, and I have my coffee again. Can you guys see? And I have my... Hi, Tim. And I have my waffles. And I also have... My Jim Beam. To put in my coffee. I haven't drank that much, though. I haven't been drinking. Remember, you said... It was for a while. It was like every single Sunday. It was getting drunk like every it was like every Sunday for like six Sundays in a row we was getting like mad drunk everybody was getting drunk during Beast Bait but then we like slowed down <laughs> where am I from I was born and raised in Washington DC oh West 28th near at the Apollo I know exactly where that is hi Warren Hi, Gary. <laughs> Chris said, yes, we were. We were getting drunk. I used to live on uh, West 147th. In Broadway. And I used to live on 142nd. In Broadway. And I used to live on 177th Street. And Broadway. <laughs> Thank you. Bourbon and waffle bake. That's what it used to be. Um, I'm gonna watch Belly. I'm gonna watch Belly. That's it. <laughs> Hi, FT. You wearing a pink shirt? My mom brought me this one from Hawaii. My parents went to Hawaii last year. My mom and my stepdad went to Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii. They just out here living their best lives, going on vacations to Hawaii and going zip lining through the jungle and you know looking at waterfalls and going fucking splunking and shit. And I'm at home. I know, you guys know I never wear bright... This is the literally the only, like, pink shirt that I own. This is, like, the only colorful shirt that I own. And I think I own, like, one blue shirt that I got in Detroit. But you guys know I never wear color. Happy Pride Month. Hi. You, you, Tim, you said you must have missed the drunk shenanigans. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. I haven't bought I haven't bought any liquor in a, a while. I know it's been a while. Cause when I bought that, I was like, oh yeah, it's been a while. Like I had a cup of tea with some of it, and I was like, oh yeah, it's been a while. My favorite novel. I don't have a. Oh, your store's not selling food today. Why? Hi, Owen. My favorite novel, um, oh yeah, there was a volcanic eruption. I was sitting in Firestone yesterday and I, was, I got new tires. You guys know I needed new tires. I got new tires. Um, and then I was watching the news while I was in Firestone and I saw that there was like a volcanic eruption in Hawaii and like, Lava, it was like the movie Volcano. Did you guys ever see that movie? I was like, oh my god. 
And the guy sitting next to me in Firestone was definitely watching porn on his phone, pornography. I go to Hawaii with family every summer. This one curl, y'all, just be in the middle, literally, of my head at all times. I go to Hawaii with the family every summer, but my mom doesn't want to go this year because of the dang volcanic eruption. Now you're stuck eating birthday cake. Whose birthday was it? It probably is cheaper to go there right now. Hi, Real Trini. Hi, Monica. You're not at work? I'm going to watch it, Warren. I'm going to watch it. Got oh your mom had a blowout on the highway. Was she okay, Ebony? Got two new tires as well. Mom had a blowout on the highway. Oh, Belly is on Netflix? What? I have my legal stream all ready to go. Why watch it in public? I guess just because you know, when you go to get your car worked on, you know you're going to be there for a while. So I guess he figured, hey, I got to pass this time one way or another. I feel like that was worthy of a Zoom. Belly's not on Netflix. You totally just lied. It's a good thing I didn't close my stream. Maybe it used to be. Uh porn while buying tires. I'm so sad I missed the beast babe. <laughs> well y'all were making fun of Chad with Bozeman. We're not gonna start that again. Whoa. I totally almost just knocked my plate off the table. People really be watching porn in public with no fucks giving. Bro, on the train, on the bus. I just be like, really? Hi Justin. Oh no, it's fine. It's all good. I was able to get them um I had like a coupon or something that they sent me in the mail, like an email code that I was able to get them by one fifty percent off. So that's the only reason why I went there. Or I wouldn't even have went there. I'm gonna watch Belly and I'm starting in three minutes. Your niece turned five. Oh, that's cute. Oh my god. I would never go to the grocery store on a Sunday. It's always packed with people moving slow. Sunday's like the day. Mmm. She was fine, but she found out all the tires were dry rotted. Got it. Crystal said, do I ever do link checks or do I not care to? No, I don't ever do it. I don't care. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never done it. I really don't know. Oh, Volcano is on Netflix. Oh, okay. I was about to... Let me see. Is it? Is it? No, not in the U.S. They have Armageddon. They have Deep Blue Sea, which I love that movie. They have National Treasure. National Treasure, I don't know if National Treasure belongs in this section, but okay. You know what I wanted to watch the other day, The Day After Tomorrow? I used to love that movie. Volcano is one of the few disaster movies that still got me hella shook. I love that movie. Oh, you went, you went, you went to the TD um, e-tour, Clarissa, how was it? You said SZA actually came? <laughs> how does she sound? Because people say she sounds really bad live, but I don't know. But how was everybody? Who was there? Was J-Rock there? Was Isaiah Rashad there? Voyeurism? <laughs> Hi, baby. I'm going to start in one minute. I'm watching Belly. I mean, I guess if you could read hentai in public, <laughs> you could watch porn in public. I see where you're going. I see where you're going with that logic. I'm eating waffles. You guys know me. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to start. Usually drink brown, but I've been on a tequila kick lately. Anybody have any good tequila recommendations? Ugh, no. Mm -mm. I can only drink tequila if it's like in a margarita or something. 
No tequila, no vodka, no thank you. Brown liquor only. When I was younger, I used to drink a ton of like, when I was like a teenager, of like vodka and tequila. I feel like I lost my taste for it. Sizzle lost her voice. Everywhere, everywhere on Sunday, unless you're gonna order food and have them deliver it to your house, leaving your house to get food, to go to the grocery store, to get fast food, to sit down in a restaurant, it's always fucking hell. Like, because everybody's out. Everybody's going to church or leaving church or getting ready to cook because it's Sunday. Oh my God, Costco on a Sunday is really hell. You're absolutely right. How can you even get in the mood when you watch porn in public? How <laughs> you had to pull your phone out and look at something else, Clarissa? Hi, Umi. I'm about to watch Belly. I see people reading Harlequin novels in public. I read Harlequin novels in public. I, I can tell, I like, like, bodice rippers with, like, half-naked people on the front. Does that count? Is that, like, porn? I never thought of it that way. But they're good. A lot of them are not bad. I mean, but I guess some people would say that there's some porn that has good storylines, right? I don't know. Listen. I got a grocery shop late at night on a weekday. Can't deal with those crowds. Right. I go like Tuesday night. I go like Tuesday night. No, don't want to play. It was just playing. Oh, my God. Wow. It was just playing. Are you kidding? It was just playing. It started playing and then it stopped. Somebody said, did you hear that SZA lost her voice? It was everywhere on social media. I said, how can you lose a voice you never had? Fast food on Sunday is trash. People always want burgers and ice cream after church. Mm, Wednesdays are the best to go grocery shopping. Let's see. I just tried to refresh the page. Let's see if it'll play now. It's playing. It's playing. It's playing now. It's playing. This intro with DMX. Oh, Toys R Us is going out of business. I believe it. Also, a lot of people are saying since his vocal cords are messed up. I have coffee with bourbon. Since it sounds great live, she's just herself. She didn't dress up, etc. That might offend people. She rocked it. So Valerie Miller said, mm, I like Dante's Peak too. Didn't Dante's Peak have the fucking boat that was getting eaten by acid? That was a tense scene. And the old lady, like, died. Didn't she? Didn't somebody die? Sister said her voice is permanently shot. What? Her voice is permanently shot? You can tell Sister lost her voice and she had her moments where she was fine. This is a good intro. But then she will completely mess it up right after. Yikes. Edge of Tomorrow is underrated. I love that movie. Hi, Dante. Costco is hell at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday. That's like Walmart in Miami. So I went to a Walmart at 9 a.m. on like a Wednesday. Oh my God. All the strippers are in there. It's packed with strippers. 
if you ever visit Miami, you have to put that on your list of things to do. Go to a Walmart at 10 a.m. What are the strippers buying? They work at night. So they go do their grocery shopping and stuff during the day. And you always see them at Walmart. You always see them at Walmart and Target. Target too, just, I used to live down the street from a Walmart in Miami. So I always used to be in that particular Walmart and it used to be mad strippers in there all the time. But you'll see them in Target too. And they'd be like fully dressed up with like a full face of makeup or they're going to have on like super tight leggings and sweatpants and, hat, and like a hat. Drinking Chardonnay on this beautiful Sunday. I'm watching Belly. They just killed all, everybody. They just killed all these people. DMX is so underrated. Hi, tarot student. Hi, Brittany. Never go to IHOP on a Sunday after church hours, too. Sincere. It's softcore porn. Harlequin romance novels are softcore porn. J Rock was there. Schoolboy Q, Kendrick, Absol, and Isaiah Rashad was there too, which was a surprise. I hop this trash on a Sunday. In my old job, we exchanged Harlequin novels and had a library in the office. How many languages can I speak? Only one, English. Hi, Awkwardly Incredible. It was a great show. I'm glad. I remember you said you had got tickets and you were really excited to go. Watching on both tablet and phone. My tablet is so freaking slow with uploading comments. I'm watching Belly. I know I have to finish watching season two of Attack on Titan. I just haven't had a chance. Excuse me, but I do need to. I was watching season two of, of 3%. I watched the whole season of 3% like twice already. This house is like not out of style. That shit is cool. <laughs> Hi, Agent James. He said, what are you watching in your house? DMX is so underrated. I just watched Edge of Tomorrow this morning. <laughs> I said, I know you don't want Keisha to come down here. I just watched Edge of Tomorrow this morning. I'm, maybe I'll watch it at some point this week. Like they don't have the TV up so loud. Like that shit not gonna wake her up. She just woke up. Ghetto Naomi Campbell, you just awoke the sleeping giant. Damn, I love DMX. All these. I remember you guys brought up all these during another bees bait, and I was like, I have never heard of all these. What is this? Q 
you should irritated. What the fuck is going on down here? I thought Sizzle wasn't coming because of her voice, but because it was Madison Square Garden, she decided to come. Edge of Tomorrow was a victim of bad marketing. Drinking Chardonnay on this beautiful Sunday. Hi, Shalise. You're behind, Monica? How are you behind? I just started. Oh, real Trini, I'm sorry. Yeah, the name of the movie is Edge of Tomorrow, which I think is a better title than Lived I Repeat. I felt like Lived I Repeat was just like the motto. Pagers. She said, what's up, Keisha? What's going on? Sis was literally trying to hit high notes like she was trying to be Mariah, making her voice worse. Voice worse. Like the song is over. She was trying to prove that she could sing, but it was not helping. Mm. Yeah. Hi, Just Nickel. What is Attack on Titan? You what? Attack on Titan is a Japanese anime set in the future with giants that eat humans. Succinct. A lot of other shit's going on, but that's good for now. Her body is really ridiculous. Sorry. I'm going to look at the comments in a minute. Keisha is really bad. Sorry. I'm sorry. Applying for jobs while watching Bees Bake. Woo! Kiana who? I don't know no fucking Kiana. Jet Li. She was supposed to be 16. They should have went with All You Need Is Kill. Edge of Tomorrow sounds like a soap opera show title to me. Ha! I think All You Need Is Kill would have been too... Um, Long and abstract. Such a little black ding ding like last night. <laughs> the bitch is lying. DMS is naked. Sorry. Sorry. Y'all the ones wanted to put belly on. Y'all the ones wanted to put belly on.
You should watch it, Gary. <laughs> no, sorry at all. Keisha is bad. We all looked. Season 3 is coming in 2019. Hi, Roderick. Oh, you help babysit your niece? That's cool. Wait, what happened, Crystal? <laughs> I'm one of the people that wanted belly. But now you're going to be mad. You're going to be like, oh, I'm not looking at the comments. <laughs> We don't really watch shows, Taylor. We don't normally watch shows. We normally only watch movies. Because what would it be like one show per Beast Bake? That would take like months to get through a season. We normally just watch one movie. Hi, Kendrick. I do like this movie, Umi. I do like this movie. You guys know me. You know I'm a sucker for some good cinematography. I feel like I keep saying that. I really do mean it. Ta <laughs> I have the belly DVD. Let me pop it in right quick. I like this movie. I do like this movie. Just like when I was, remember when I was watching The Color Purple and I was like, you guys, I love this movie. Like, I'm going to be watching a lot of it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't really watch any trailers. Did you see the, the trailer of the upcoming Purge film with black people? No. I normally don't watch any trailers for any movies because I feel like the trailers, trailers nowadays be giving away the whole fucking, um plot of the movie so I, I normally avoid all of them i haven't seen any trailers i only see trailers when i go to the movies and i haven't been to the movies in like months because like what's even out what's out my niece is amazing i'm always so fascinated by how wise and strong and personality babies can be she's conscious you said she turned five right She's, five-year-olds aren't grown. Five-year-olds aren't babies anymore. Five-year-olds could talk and they're having thoughts. They want to have conversations. How do you tag a person from your phone? Five-year-olds swear they grown. And aren't five-year-olds like in kindergarten? Like once, once little kids go to like kindergarten, elementary school, like first grade, five or six, oh, you really can't tell them nothing. They really think they grown. Oh, you missed that one, Brittany, when we did Color Purple? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It was fairly recent. Color Purple is my favorite fucking movie. I miss that Beast Bake. Damn. I hate trailers. They spoil too many good moments. Yeah, and it's almost like when you watch too many trailers and you also see too much of the movie, you go in the movie and you're, like, looking for, like, those particular, like, moments in the movie. It's supposed to be the first purge. Oh, I see somebody got blocked. Just be patient. Infinity War is out, but I don't want to see that. Yeah, no. No, I'm not going to see that. Trailers have been spoiling whole movies for a while now. Hello, Cameron. Hi, Alex Indigo. Ha, <laughs> Monica. No, uh, no, Deadpool 2. Oh, uh. I'm finding it very hard to consider spending money watching that. I will have to see it for free. And I don't love Zazie Beats either. I'm not overly impressed. 
I feel like people are gassing the shit out of her. They hype her ass up. I watched way too many trailers for Avengers. Ryan Reynolds is not funny at all. Totally knew I know that still drink 40 ounces, man. The 80s. Like it's cold. He mad. He tired of them. Oh my god. He just beat this nigga's ass. He just beat this nigga's ass. She's only she's only ten months and she leads us around in a good way. It does take a village to raise kids. My nephew, who's the baby's father, is only eighteen and was not ready to be a father. Yeah, that's what happens. Hi, soybeans. He really beat his ass and made him strip naked. I'm watching Belly. Y'all voted to watch this. Like, this isn't like an intense ass movie. I kept saying, I don't know if we should watch it. Y'all wanted to watch it. I still haven't watched Black Lightning. I'm horrible. I know, right? We're 15 minutes in. People are already getting blocked. They really got naked in this movie. Like, butthole naked. <laughs> I just watched The Book of Life because you recommended it in an old video. It was amazing. Uh, I saw a trailer for Coco. I feel like Disney struck again and copied the hell out of it. You know, I really did like The Book of Life. It's funny. It's so funny that you should say that, Roxanne Vicious. Because I literally just watched Coco last night. I saw that they put it on Netflix. And I never saw it. I mean, it was cute. It was alright. I think I I mean, no, let me not say that. It was, like, really beautiful to look at. It was, like, very visually, like, arresting. Um... I mean, and it got kind of, like, dark towards the end. It took a little bit of, like, a dark twist there towards the end. But I think I liked the Book of Life a little bit more. I mean, and, like, the sto the storylines were similar. I don't know if I would say they copied. The storylines were similar. But, I mean, but, like, even if, if you, like, know the backstory, which that's, like, social media and the internet and shit, right? Of how they tried to, like, trademark... Day of the Dead, they were going to call the movie Day of the Dead and, like, trademark that. And people were like, Disney, you can't trademark Day of the Dead. Like, so that's even why the shit was called Coco. So every time I'm, like, watching the shit and, like, the Coco references, I'm, like, reminded. You guys tried to, like, trademark a Mexican holiday, which is the only reason why this movie's even called Coco. Oh, you never seen Belly? Whoa, it's Monica. Romeo Must Die? I don't think we watched Romeo Must Die. Coco was better looking even though it had a similar premise. Coco made me cry like a baby because I watched it months after my grandma died. I could see if you had like a dead grandmother that maybe Coco would like touch you. The Book of Life goddess character was everything. Personally, I love spoilers, trailers, knowing as much as I can before watching the movie. <laughs> I heard that too. I was like, Disney, get the fuck out of here with that. Ah, thanks for giving a mini review of Coco. I mean, like, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. It was cute. It was really pretty. It was, like, beautiful. There were, like, some scenes that I was like, oh, yeah. It would have been nice to see this on the big screen, like when he 
first gets to like the city of the dead to like see that on the big screen probably would have been worth the price of a ticket I run shit. The kind of hype Disney movies up too too much to me. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just a hater. I love Romeo Must Die. Disney just be stealing. They the real thugs. My grandma is alive and well and wreaking havoc. She'll probably live forever. We say that about my grandma too. We'd be like, this lady probably gonna outlive all of us. A lot of, yeah, a lot of unresolved issues after watching Book of Life, but I do feel that it had a superior story. Unrelated question, did you have a lot of pressure on you to go to college? Because I'm freaking the heck out. I haven't been accepted to one yet, and it's already June. My mom wanted me to go to college, but I didn't want to go. I kind of think college is like a scam. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask. Disney is evil corp. I gotta watch the last season of Mr. Robot. Speaking of evil corp. T-Mex really is with the fucking girl Kiana. Talking about something, I don't know no damn Kiana. You a liar. And you know she's extra. Uh, nowadays, he would have been like mute. He would have hit that mute button on the phone. Like, so you wouldn't hear nothing. Tommy ain't shit. Definition of an ain't shit ass nigga. Monica! College is fully a scam. Depends on what you go to college for. Disney even steals from its own self with all these remakes. My parents, Roxanne Vicious said, my parents definitely raised me and my sisters to see college as the only option. Yeah, I was not raised that way. But my mom did want me to go, but not like on some is the only option. But she did want me to go. This baby's cute. Black Nightling Pros, the whole Jefferson family is amazing, cons, the villains couldn't act for shit, I was very aware, I was looking at a mustache twirling TV villain every time Tobias was on screen. Somebody said to me that they felt like the, the, the show Black Lightning had issues with respectability politics, that the family is like good, and they're like fighting crime that's by bad black people and that they had an issue with that. College is a scam, but I did graduate shit. I did not accumulate debt just to drop out. Rule of thumb, if you go to college, push yourself to finish. Hi, Remy. We have to do something about higher education, straight up putting generation after generation into debt. I saw this article on The Atlantic. I haven't read it yet. I have it open. That was called like college isn't is is like no match for American poverty. It was like 
that like the wealth inequality is like to the point now where like even going to college and like quote unquote getting like a good job is like not even obviously it's not a guarantee and even if you still do that doesn't even really mean anything anymore if you're not like already wealthy i'm gonna read it probably after we finish i like started it and i like read what it was about i liked coco but can we please get a 2d animated film i need some variety what was the last 2d animated film the princess and the frog what was it no it's fucking curl I believe college is a scam, but I think you should only go if you want to. If you could find another option that's going to give you some security, I say go for it. You can always save up and go later. I always encourage people to go to like trade school, like learn a trade. And that way you can always work, like no matter what. No one could take your trade away from you once you have that trade skill. Fucking Rico. Rico. For profit universities are a scam. It doesn't matter what degree you're getting. Tuition is ridiculous across the entirety of academia. Yeah, I just feel like even the whole concept of higher education is some bullshit. You have to pay money to go to school, to get this piece of paper, to get this credential saying that now you're eligible to get a job. But you have to already have money to go to school. So that puts people that already have money at an advantage. Like it's a classist as fuck system that just puts people that already have privilege at an advantage. So I don't understand like how... Are people that are not privileged, like, really expecting that to work out for us? I feel like it doesn't make sense. Or, I mean, like, it's possible, but it's like, the odds are not in your favor already. But that's just me. You about to get pulled over, dumbass. Hi, Christmas. It'll wait. I see you. College works for things like medical and law fields, but why for those important ass jobs are they most are they the most expensive ass fields? We need doctors and lawyers, yet you have to go to college for them. I mean, but you also need like teachers and people that don't get paid shit. Who who even decides? It's like already an established hierarchy. That higher education just perpetuates, in my opinion. Do you like Mr. Robot? I love that show. The actors are so good. Like, I actually hate Tyrell and his wife. It's so good, and the plot twists are good, too. Yeah, I love Mr. Robot. That's my show. Mm -hmm. Right, like, she don't hear her talking. It all depends on your major and your desires in life. I hate forcing people into STEM fields, but I do feel it's the most viable for financial stability after college. But not everybody is smart enough to do STEM. Like, and I don't say that because I don't think I'm like smart. I'm not smart enough like in that way. Like I don't do like math and science. Like that's just not my thing. Like I could barely add and subtract. I know that about myself. You cannot trust me to be like launching. Like you could not trust me to be launching rockets. Like, I'd be like, who gave me this responsibility? Like, not everybody is suited to go into those type of fields. Like, I'm, like I already said, it's like already established system that's like already placed value in certain places. And if you're already privileged, it's going to keep working out in your favor. And if you're not, then it's not. And who's normally not privileged? kids trying to rob them I'm from a military family my mom and dad said college or military plus I had a baby young so they needed me to have a plan yeah my mom said go to college or move out and get a job those were my two options 
but she preferred for me to go to college. She like really wanted me to go to college. But I wasn't like raised to go to college. That was, I don't know, it's weird. Right, I was given the John Witherspoon treatment. My dad was like, you either work or you go to school. Right, exactly. But my mom did make it known that she like really wanted me to go to school. Just, but not because of anything, really. She just felt like I was smart. I should go. But not because, like, you have to go to school or else you're going to die. It's like nothing like that. Look at this outfit. Keisha is really putting t boss to shame. I'd be like, I don't want to, I don't want to be in a frame with Keisha. <laughs> Fuck that nigga. She's giving Keisha some real facts right now, some real knowledge. You have to do what's right for you, Keisha. You know that nigga ain't shit. You know that nigga ain't shit. The internet makes college obsolete for a lot of fields, especially creative ones. My dad was first gen in his family to go to college and he put himself through. And both my mom's parents went to college and both my parents are teachers. So the pressure was on. I was the first person in my family to go to college. Somebody said, that's not true. You can't do any useful science labs just by watching internet videos. There is some respectability issues there in Black Lightning, but the older sister challenges it at every turn. She's my favorite character. Davey said he got that vibe from the trailer of the respectability politics. That's why he's not watch pressed to watch. I have a problem with black superheroes fighting black supervillains. One of the reasons why I couldn't get into Luke Cage. Somebody else said that Luke Cage had similar problems to Black Lightning. Of that the black superhero represents like a respectable figure. Fighting against like the not respectable black criminals. And that there's like not enough addressing of like. Why would black superheroes not fight against like racial issues. Why would they just want to fight other niggas? They felt like there was like a weird black on black crime undercurrent. <laughs> Hype Williams really has a, vi a vision. STEM definitely can produce stability, but my degree is in business and that has also propelled me to greater possibilities. Or that's like, for example, like, I like philosophy. If I could go back to school for free and just to study philosophy for fun and then get a degree in philosophy, I would. But it's like, you can't even do shit with a philosophy degree, right? They, it's already been, like, preordained what you have to go to school for to make money. If you don't want to do that, it's like, fuck you. But I also feel like we need philosophy. Look at Sean Paul. Just from like a totally different like perspective. I feel like we need philosophy. And I even feel like the lack of philosophers is a huge part of why like our society has become like stagnant and like morally corrupt. Because we don't even have people that like sit around and like think about the issues that are facing our society and how to like fix it. In a way that doesn't involve like monetary funds and capital. I always feel like it looks like this nigga has a rat on his shoulder. 
Like, is that a rat? Like, what the fuck was that on his shoulder? I think college is good for gaining independence and structure and discipline. If you lack those things, then college can help you practice those things. Also, networking. I never put too much stock in the Coco Copies Book of Life argument. There's room for more than one movie celebrating Latin American culture and Day of the Dead. I've never seen Steven Universe. For architecture, you technically don't have to go to college for a degree to get licensed. Working 14 years plus a high school diploma equates to going to an accredited college program. Nigga, you did. The last 2D movie by Disney was Winnie the Pooh in 2010. What year did Princess and the Frog come out? Trade school is just as effective in getting certifications. Right, like, nigga, you already dead. I don't even know why you tried to, like, run from the cops. You already dead. You're obviously bleeding out from that wound on your left side. Or they might even shot you in the chest, and you dead already. Oh, yeah, it was in the chest. It wasn't even in the shoulder. You was already dead. I wish I would have learned a trade. They're taking a lot of the trades out of high schools, which is why. Bitch, who the fuck you calling a bitch? You the bitch once Tommy finds out about this. Keisha didn't give a fuck about nothing. And then she clicked on that nigga like, bye nigga. She ain't give a fuck about nothing. Nothing. I've been pushing a lot of talented young folks to go into welding, machining, electricians, etc. Those guys do very well and are always in demand. Bro, three years ago I did a video on higher education and black people. Y'all can feel free to go. I'm pretty sure it's in the must-watch playlist. And it's also in the on playlist. I literally said in my video, I was like, listen. I said the exact same thing. They always need certain trades. We always need electricians. We always need welders, plumbers. Like, it's certain things that we always need because it's certain things that can't be automated. Like, there are certain things that can't be automated. So... Get go to a trade school, fucking learn construction, like learn how to build some shit, get some certifications. So that way, no matter what, you can always fall back on those skills. And if you decide you want to go to college, maybe you can even like work your way through college and support yourself utilizing those skills. Or you could work and save money before you decide what you want to go to college for. Like, Keisha got the face mask on, she's like, what the hell? There were some hints of respectability politics in the show, but they tackle some issues with race. The father, Jefferson, is more respectability politics. The daughters are more the opposite of him. It's a balance of views. For the villains, they're a bit cartoony, but not overly cheesy. The show's a bit preachy at times. I lost my pager. <laughs> You've been calling every 15 minutes for two hours. I would take the phone off the hook, like... That used to be block and ignore before we had the block and ignore function on the phone. Leave the phone off the hook. So when they call you, they get a busy signal. Mm -hmm. I also read an article like three years ago that said public education became a thing because during the industrial age, People needed to read and do basic math. Now we need people to buy things. I 
I did both. I went to a trade school first so I could make some money, then went to college later. Not everyone has the passion to do STEM. That's your man. That's your man. As soon as he gets knocked, he calls my crib. Oh, there's a bunch of y'all architecture. I can't imagine being in debt after college. If you follow the lines of money, you can always find out why power for people are doing what they're doing. Eventually, everybody will get a basic stipend just for living. Canada actually ran an experiment with it last year. I'm in favor of a universal basic income. I think it's necessary. Are you going to hear out, Justin? High school was hellish for me, and so I didn't want to go near another classroom set in. I schooled myself over the years easily and naturally. They got her, she says she's sick. She don't even talk like that. I suck at science and math and I hate it. My mom made me go to a college prep STEM school and I don't fuck with neither of those things. That sucks. This push for STEM just makes for good engineers. No shade on engineers and mathematics, etc. If they don't think critically or creatively. Right, and we do also need creatives. I'm sorry. I'm a nursing major. People, please don't go into a medical field if you aren't ready to work. And yes, college should definitely be free. Half of these jobs want you to have experience over a degree. I fucking told you 70% of all jobs nowadays are found through networking. So just going to college and getting a degree is really not enough. And even if you go to college to learn how to network, you still have to be in certain colleges running in certain circles most of the time. So that still puts certain people at a disadvantage over others. It's not like it's this fair system like people like to pretend. It's not. There's a program in New York where they will pay your tuition for the four years, but you have to stay in the city for four years afterwards to pay, pay them. You think those programs are beneficial? I mean, sure, I guess. Yeah. Sure, why not? Social studies, history, and art were my subjects in school. That's that bullshit. They place value over the math and sciences, over everything else is of creativity, language, agriculture, etc. Don't have a place. They go method man. Right, and those be things that we really need. Like, not to say that we don't need STEM, because obviously we really need STEM. But, like, we do also really need, like, agriculture, like you just said. And, like, plumbing, like... You fucking use the toilet every day, right? Like, I needed to go to college and grad school for my field, which is mental health. And I remember cringing at how so much of the research and data was skewed towards white populations. I'm oh, sorry, Mayo had to fight the system. Hi, Sam from England. I do have school debt. I do have school debt. Whoa, who said I didn't have school debt? I do have school debt. <laughs> I didn't go to college. I was too poor. I really wanted to, though. I love science. There are jobs you can get in scientific fields without a degree that might pay for your education later. It's not too late, but you can still do what you love. He said, is you bad about it? Look at Method Man's glasses. It's 
Looks like it has a wig on. I was kicked out of my parents' house at 18, and my aunt was like, school, work, or military. I was like, yeah, I'm too rebellious for the military, so I guess I'll work. <laughs> Do the right thing, Keisha. Like love. Trade schools are being slept on outside of because of classism for sure. I work in the engineering field and I work with some dumbass engineers. Oh sorry, and I see some dumbass engineers working with much star much smarter pipe fitters, welders, electricians, etc. Really arrested Keisha. She wasn't even doing anything wrong. Hi, Carmen. Why did why did naked naked ones comments get deleted? I see a lot of comments got deleted. Fucking T-Bots had to come bail your ass out. Tommy didn't even come bail you out. I mean, obviously he couldn't because he don't want to get arrested, but still. She's just still bad, even in an orange jumpsuit. Oh, cause you they cause she said cause they said I don't I don't know who that is cause they said Mexican. Make it one. I don't want to misgender you. I don't know. I'm like I see all these comments that got like removed. <laughs> Universal basic income is definitely necessary. It also makes sense. We have a whole plant that builds tanks in Ohio just to give that town a place of work. We don't even use tanks to fight anymore. I mean, like, it's gonna, I feel like it's gonna have to happen. I read this really good article last year that was called The End of Work that I totally recommend. If you type in The End of Work, I'm sure it will come up where they were like, it's just too many people and like not enough work to go around, especially with automation. And at a certain point, that's going to have to be reconciled with because we, like, put all this, like, emphasis on, like, work as, like, that's how we become valuable, like, productive members of society. But at a certain point, it's just not going to be enough work. So what are we going to do? Your bitch gave me the number. First things cut from the budget, education, and healthcare. Then there are those state and city obscure jobs that nobody knows about. I've been recently learning about appraiser jobs. They're making 40 to 60K a year to start off a three-day course. Architects are always butting heads with engineers because engineers have no imagination whatsoever. Like, come on, you're smart enough for this thing to function and not be ugly at the same time. The student debt bubble has exploded. Student debt is in the trillions because people just can't pay. Hi, Quentin. Mm. Poison. This guy has a full camo outfit on, about to drink a poison drink. 
it's really irking to me when black folks keep trying to raise their kids on the American dream fallacy and wonder why their kids are barely successful in life. Like, nurture your child's talents first. Keisha's still bad on the orange jumpsuit yet again. I saw an IG quote saying, people ask what you do for a living to determine your value. Goddamn, if that ain't the truth. Yeah. Sure, Roderick. You could do fan art of me. People be doing double masters in Europe for free. I wanted to go to the Art Institute for Fashion Design, but I would have been in so much debt. A lot of the engineers I've met are suffering from depression and boredom too. Out of like 10, all of them were miserable. They hate their jobs. I got kicked out of campus. How to, woo! Got kicked out of ca campus housing after freshman year for fighting. <laughs> Damn. And then again, halfway through senior year, I really took that shit for granted and regret hacking at how I did. That sucks. Woo. Most of the time, it's about who you know at the end of the day. What about people who are from low-income black communities and don't have access to those opportunities to network? Or what about all the jobs, for example, that require you to take like un unpaid internships and work for free and all this type of shit? Like, there's people out there that can't afford to work for free. Like, there's people out there that can't afford to do like internships and stuff because they have to work, because they have to make money. They don't have the privilege of not working, not making money. So like... And, and I do have a degree in journalism, which I saw somewhere I wrote. And like in journalism, unpaid internships are like par for the course. You have, they say you have to work for free to like get your foot in the door. I'm like, I'm not working for free. I don't work for free. Why would I do that? Like again, but people that already have money or that already know people, maybe they don't have to do that or they don't mind doing that. People that still live at home. Like after I graduated from college, I didn't live at home. I didn't have any family in the city I was living. I had to work. So I couldn't do like an internship or something like that. Uh, architects are airheaded Jezebels that just do anything developers want. <laughs> they have fucking subtitles for this like Jamaican patois. That shit really doesn't sound like English. I have this really good friend, like one of my best friends is from Jamaica. And sometimes we used to like talk on the phone, I used to be like, I can't understand you. You like have to slow down. Some of these engineers have piss poor communication skills and cannot think outside of fixing a problem in bulk. Teachers, farmers, sanitation, social service providers, etc. All are needed, but nobody values these workers or are willing to pay them fairly. Right. And then when you say, well, like, hey, the janitor should, like, make more money. People will be like, if he wants to make more money, he should get a better job. It's like, better than what? Like, better is relative. Like, what if he stopped taking out the garbage in your office? You'd be really upset, wouldn't you? But you don't want to pay him to do that. You're going to say that he should get a better job even though he's doing a service for you that you use every day and that you need. What? <laughs> okay, thank you, one. <laughs> you got to talk about how physics <laughs> doesn't make sense. Oh, I see. I see your comment. So did your parents, like, push you to go to school, Naked One? Oh, am I offline? I'm here. I just saw a comment that said I got put offline. I'm here. Okay, I'm back. Okay. I really wanted to study journalism and communication, but my school didn't offer it. So I started with a theater arts degree, then changed to business. 
Yeah, I had this blue hard art history professor who was always talking about how artists hate their fathers. And I was like, no, fathers hate their disobedient, weird art children. Everybody ran out of the restaurant. Y'all already, y'all acting like DMS not on the run. Pulling out guns in the middle of the restaurant. If I was DMX, I'd be so mad. I'd be like, y'all acting like I'm not on the run from the police right now. Are you kidding? The no pay internships really get you in the creative fields. Woo, Davey. Congratulations. Okay. Oh, thank you. I see your comment, Russell. Unpaid internships need to die. That's that apprentice apprentice mentality from the eighteen hundreds. But at least they gave your ass free room and board for that fucking free work. Do I have a five-year plan? No. I probably should, but I don't. I don't even have a five-month plan. I'm watching Belly. Carmen, you did super chat. Thank you. Uh, honey bunny. I need to work unpaid for X years to still pay rent. Feed myself, get to work, how? Super chat. Woo! You so see, he finally learned how to do it. No pay equals no labor, and people wonder why there's a shortage in teachers. If you require someone to do something that takes up most of their time, then you should pay them a livable wage. Economists like Der Derek Hamilton and Sandy Darity have been advocating for a federal job guarantee. Okay. And the people that say if we pay people at McDonald's 15 an hour, they won't ever want to get another job. Like if they don't, so what? But I work in HR. People take a job that pays less for other perks. Yeah, it's just because that we were just talking about. We like link certain jobs and certain fields and getting to a certain level and making a certain amount of money to value. So it's like, if you can't, do, if you don't want to do that, you don't have no value. You don't deserve shit. You, I wrote a, I wrote a bunch of essays on value for Riot Material. I did a whole series. On how we link value. One essay was on how we link value to jobs and capital. One essay was on how we link value to uh, like relationships and dating. And the other one was on how we link value to school and education. It was like a three part series that we don't have like no type of inherent value without these like external like things. That we've been like raised to believe all these external things are what give us value. So it's like if you're a janitor that like never went to school and like you don't make a ton of money and you're single, even though you are providing like an invaluable service as a janitor, and even though maybe you know you're just valuable as a human being, maybe you have friends and family that love you, but if you don't like have those things, you don't have no value in this world. No, I don't watch The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. About your parents, naked one. They tell you to go to college and education is the key to a better future, but teachers are paid shit and black kids are funneled to prison. 
I don't see a lie there. Man's in a shootout. I am the original Jamaican Dandara. Thank you, Cactus Jokes. I hate how undervalued CNAs are. Like you don't want to take care of your helpless parents and grandparents. Be glad for the people who have the heart to change their diapers. We should celebrate them. That's how I feel about the way that we talk about child care providers as well. Like child care providers don't make shit. Especially working in like big like fucking daycares and shit like that. They don't make no money. People that take care of little kids and old people and teachers <laughs> don't make nothing. Unless they're like private, privatized. Our society values labor but doesn't value the people who yield it. Look at this mask. Yeah, see, I started off in daycare. They don't make shit. Remy. You are what? You said they did or they did not? Hi, Velma. I don't think they ever say who it was, but I always thought it was the other girl that they showed, the uh, not Keisha, but the other girl that they showed that had like the markings on her face. When I was in college, I worked as an aide. I took care of old people. They paid me minimum wage, which was $9 at the time, but I needed all these certifications. See, that's wildness. I just hate when rich kids or privileged people decide to put their two cents in and say we should follow our dreams and work hard. Like, sir, do you know what it means to work hard? When I was a teacher, starting in 2002, I made 28K. Looking back, I don't know how I survived. This movie is strong, the acting is strong, and the message is still relevant. Yeah, Belly's a good movie. That's why I was like, I'm going to be watching the movie because I like this movie. And it's a good movie. Because I wanted to watch it. Y'all do hustle hard in Detroit, Remy. I'm watching Belly, but it's actually almost to the end. It's like 20 minutes left. My mom takes care of the elderly. She's paid close to nothing, but yet is expected to be there. Rain, snow, sleet, hail, earthquake, tornado, you name it. Yeah. And then if she says, I'm not coming in, or I want to get paid more money, people are going to be aghast. Like, what do you mean you're not coming in or you want more money? If you want to get paid more money, stop taking care of my fucking elderly parent that I refuse to take care of. 
and get a job like me working in an office. Bye, Just Nickel. Playing devil's advocate of CNAs, child care providers, et cetera, got paid more. Wouldn't that raise competition for those jobs and push many of the people that do those jobs out? No, not if everybody made a livable wage. The whole point, the whole purpose of competition for higher paying jobs is because pe people don't make enough money. People need to make more money. Even people that be making like mad money, you guys have never seen those articles of even people that be making mad money, they'd be like, 500K is not enough. A million dollars a year is not enough. My family requires this and requires that and requires this and requires that. Everything requires capital. And the prices for everything are out of control. So everybody wants more money and needs more money. If we had stable, number one, if we had stabilized prices on things, and number two, if we did have like a universal basic income or a livable wage, people wouldn't fight over jobs. If they could make a livable wage at working at McDonald's. Like it's still, that's still from the mindset of like, oh, there's not enough to go around, so we have to fight. But really, we have like a lot of wealth. It's just the wealth disparity. Like, there's a lot of wealth that could be, I don't know, spread around. Right, money is abundant. Right, thank you. Money is abundant. Even if they, if, if every single, let's even just talk about like just here in America. If every single American that makes like over, I don't know, pick a number, $100 million a year, had to pay like a 10% tax, 1% tax, which isn't even that much, that's like pocket change to them, right? And it went into a pot for a universal basic income or for a livable wage. That's not impossible. It's not even implausible. Like, it could be done very easily. Everybody gets to the point where they don't want to fucking live in New York anymore. They got to go. Even if you're not even involved in this type of shit. There really needs to be a wage cap. No single person does a million dollars worth of work. Jeff Bezos is ridiculous. Right. That's why people will be like, oh, but like Jeff Bezos worked so hard for that money. Like, why should he have to put any of the money into a universal cap? It's like, do you like understand like how much money Jeff Bezos like really has? Like, Jeff Bezos has so much money that we really can't comprehend how much money he has. It really would take nothing away from Jeff Bezos to put, like, money into a pot for universal basic income. Like, it literally would take nothing away from him. It wouldn't take food out of his mouth. It wouldn't take anything away from his children or his lineage. Like, but we worship money. We worship capital. We worship capitalism. We worship this idea that people work hard and then they get what they deserve even though that's not true. For publicity. This shit gonna reach Tommy. The streets really age you. Sure, you look like he's 25, not 12. The middle class is non existent. Somebody who has never gone without something has no business telling someone else it's not important. My parents, right? The, my parent, my grandparents came to America with nothing, face ass, like hush. Your parent, your grandparents were bootleggers and slave owners. 
<laughs> I have a strong, intimidating side eye. I'm a master. She said, oh shit. What you doing in my house? T-Boss pulled that shit out real quick, like, yeah, nigga. T-Boss was a real one. Stay cool, don't hurt nobody. A million dollars is the new middle class. Hype Williams should do more directing. CNAs don't even get paid that much in Chicago. Money is abundant. Basic income would support the novel idea that all people deserve to live and like have their human rights protected and supported. <laughs> A lot of these jobs make you sign forms that keep you from joining or creating unions so they cannot even fight for better wages most of the time. Pay the people willing to do that job. We can't keep people in poverty because of what it might do. People are struggling. That's what matters. Rich people are hoarding it like they're going to use all of it. Chick-fil-A raises minimum wage is $17 an hour. And Chick-fil-A always hires black people, which I know we hate Chick-fil-A, but Chick-fil-A always hires. I always see black kids working in Chick-fil-A. I work as a personal assistant to a psychiatrist and he makes mad money and says it's not enough. He pays 20000 a month on lawyer fees just to keep his baby mom from fucking up his kid. Right. GDP per capita is 65 k There really needs to be a wage gap. We know where all the money is. It's time to pop the balloon. A family of four would have to have like 260 k Right. Jeff Bezos has more money than most people in the world combined. I hate that dude. <laughs> These fucking assholes don't even end up paying as much tax as you and I do. Hard work doesn't make you successful. You think billionaires work harder than people with three jobs. Jeff Bezos has over $100 billion. He could lose most of that and literally not even feel the difference. The money's just a high score for him at this point. You have to look at the cost of living now versus the cost of living 30, 20, even 10 years ago, which is much different. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no type of, like, regulation of the prices, but, like, the living wage is not going up, and the wages are not going up. And then when you say, well, people need a livable wage because the price of everything is going up, but the wages are stagnant, people look at you and they'd be like, I don't know, get a better job or something. And you'd be like, well, how am I going to get a better job? I don't have any money. Well, I don't know, take out $100,000 worth of loans and accrue debt to go to school, which still won't guarantee you a job. And then, I don't know, figure out a way to not work for a year so you can have an unpaid internship to get your foot in the door. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, the things that people tell you don't even make sense. Like, they logically, you just be like, what? Work for 50 years and then get next to nothing for your retirement. That's capitalism. Wonder why there aren't any bookstores anymore. That shit was on him and it was calculated. That's true. Three hundred thousand is actually the new middle class. Yeah. Just like that racist dick Elon Musk refusing to let his employers unionize. You, Elon Musk also has so much money. And people are like, oh, why don't you sink your money into like creating a universal basic income? And he's like, no, I want to like build rockets. Okay, none of us can tell you that you can't build rockets with your money.
Nobody's watching Dear White People. I didn't enjoy the movie, so the series, I wasn't interested. I didn't like the movie, and I didn't like season one of the show either. It's a scam. Most wealth in this country is inherited. That hard work mentality keeps people from accepting the fact that we live in a system of classism. Niggas in the house. Scared two balls to death. He's like, they're dead, T. Even he's making a face while she's talking, like. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have been poor born poor. <laughs> that was your decision. That's literally like what Elon Musk does, build rockets. I work with a professor that's been working for 30 years who's looking forward to 425, 425 a month in retirement. Most millionaires are not self-made, that is a lie, that's a scam. Or even people that push this self-made fucking lie. Like fucking 45 will tell you that he was self-made with a little loan of a million dollars from his like rich ass father. Like most of these people are not self-made. That is not true. I argue with Gen Xers about this shit all the time. They're always telling me, what if I did it? Why do I want somebody else to get it easy? What do you mean so they don't struggle like I did? I think that's also a thing as well. Of people being like, well, I had it hard, so we all got to have it hard. Type shit. Shoot out. Shoot out in front of the barbershop. There's a difference between working hard and having a good work ethic. Elon is so full of shit, to be honest. Hyperloop is not even a practical idea, but people just believe everything the dude says. Fuck Elon Musk. A small loan of one million. I just blocked that person. I think that's a white troll or a dumbass coon. Either way, it doesn't matter. We talking about like universal basic income amongst people that make over like a hundred million dollars a year and he wanna bring up like rappers. Block. Wealth inequality is worth worse in the U.S. than the U.K. And the U.K. still has aristocracy, literally king, queen, all of that. If they pay, or the if they pay fast food workers fifteen dollars an hour, they have to pay paramedics more. Like yes, both parties deserve more money, right? Like yes, a lot of people deserve money. Yeah, okay, like maybe Jay Z and like. Diddy and like Dr. Dre, okay. 
self-made millionaires, billionaire, you know, billionaires tipping into billionaire. But okay, that's like three people. Like, we're not gonna like use them like as if they're some type of like shining example for shit that we could all accomplish if we work hard. I feel like that's a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, we don't all have that, like, type of talent. But, like, there's just a lot of, like, none of them had million-dollar loans from their parents unless I'm missing something. Right, they're exceptions. Exactly, they are exceptions to the rule. There's always exceptions to the rule, as I've said before. Like, what, what are we talking about here? The media push for Hyperloop was ridiculous. China has a better system. It's a trackless double-decker train that doesn't stop at the bottom portion. You get on and off at the top. As soon as they were like, well, what about rappers? I was like, yeah, okay, block. Block and I want you to listen to Brackets by J. Cole since you want to bring up rappers in a conversation about wealth disparities. And go ahead and listen to ATM also while you're at it. Like, oh yeah, because Oprah did it, you could do it too. Pull yourself up and work, boy. <laughs> but white media won't let Jay forget he was a drug dealer when he is the American dream. I mean, but like, just like somebody said earlier in this chat, like half of fucking white Americans' grandparents were like bootleggers during Prohibition. Which is like the equivalent of selling drugs, is it not? Like, but the war on drugs, which was specifically manufactured specifically to target black people, has like, now we're like, oh, drug dealers, drug dealers, drug dealers. But people will proudly talk about how grandma and grandpa were like bootleggers selling alcohol like out of their house during Prohibition because we've like stigmatized whatever. You're all racist. Everything's racist. Everything is racist. And even if it's not, it is. People be like, Saren, why do you think everything is racist? I'd be like, because everything is racist. <laughs> I'm sorry. Literally everything has been racialized. And like white supremacy is everywhere. And capitalist, yes, also. Somebody just said, and chances are we're never going to see moguls like Jay-Z and Dr. Dre again. Right. Jay-Z and Dr. Dre and, like, Diddy are all old now. Like, they actually, like, had an opportunity because of, like, the time that they were even coming up in. Even, like, we're coming up in a different time now. We probably wouldn't even have those same opportunities to even be the exception, which is sad, isn't it? Yeah, what kind of talent or intellect I have shouldn't be the only thing that makes my life worth anything. Like, I feel like no one deserves to be homeless and or starving. There are less than 250,000 black families that are worth over $1 million in the U.S. and they're boomers. We ignore just how much luck is involved in those type of stories. Keisha in her little apartment. Getting lucky doesn't mean you didn't also work hard, but it has to be acknowledged. Liter like literally 99.99% .99 of rappers are struggle rappers without a dollar to their name. Right. What about rappers like Jay-Z? 
What about rappers like Jay Z? This might seem. Ooh. This might seem far fetched, and I know this will never happen, but I believe all the wealth the white community acquired during the Jim Crow era should be liquidated by the government. I agree. I think all that wealth should be liquidated. Sorry. I agree. Just like I think since they're legalizing marijuana, everybody that's in jail for selling marijuana should be retroactively released. I feel like that's fair, personally. They should be released and have their records expunged. All wealth that was accumulated during slavery and Jim Crow era should be liquidated by the government and used for reparations. I feel like that's fair. But they never, but they never would. Keisha about to kill this dude. Ten million white families are worth over one million. Killed him. Ten million white families are worth over one million dollars in the U.S. This, they be selling us this fake American dream where you could come with a hundred dollars and get one million in less than a year. I fucking love brackets. This might be a good reason to listen to a podcast. I found out about the Amazon BS from a podcast. I found out about it through reading. I read. Not that there's anything wrong with like people that listen to podcasts. Not to say that you can't read and listen to podcasts or whatever, whatever. But I found out about most shit through reading. And I subscribe to a lot of newsletters. Yes, let me just bloom myself into a genius, no problem. Why didn't I think of that before? Then I won't have to worry about being able to pay my rent. PSA, it all has to go. It does. Yeah, I remember the bit from Chris Rock on how we have to be exceptional when males are just mediocre. The one about his neighborhood and about his white neighbors are dentists. Yeah, I remember that. He was like, it's me. And it was like some other like famous ass like black person. He was like, and then my neighbor on the other side is like a dentist. Like white people could be dentists. And be all right. They were bootleggers, heroin pushers, operating speakeasies, number runners, slum lords, and everything in between. Right. Like, white people played mad dirty to get everything they have. They literally played, like, mad dirty to get everything they have. But then want to tell niggas that we got to just work hard and play fair and do this and do that. That's part of, like, this racist ass scam, too. Got niggas thinking we're supposed to be playing by some rules. People really believe that poor people did something to be poor, that they deserve to be poor, and that they aren't doing anything to not be poor anymore. Most of white wealth could be traced back to slavery, Jim Crow, etc., but they have the nerve to preach this bootstrap rhetoric. I always think of the Mara family whenever we start talking about this. Rooney Mara and Kate Mara that are both fucking actors. Or actresses, whatever. Their fucking family, the Mara family, owns the New York Giants. And they also own the fucking, the Steelers, I want to say. Their fucking grandfather, like, started the teams, like, invested the teams in the 1920s using, like, money from, like, mad illegal dealings and, like, mad government programs that like black people were like specifically left out of and so now they're like billionaires right they're like billionaires they own both of those teams which how can one family own both teams we're not even gonna get into that 
now they're like billionaires. I remember like reading something where Rooney was like, yeah, luckily like my family didn't like push me to do anything except what I wanted to do. They like always supported me being an actress and this and that. I'm like, bitch, that's because y'all have so much money. Like you have so much money that of course you're able to like pursue being a, you and your sister. Neither one of you bitches have ever had to work. Of course you're both able to pursue being like serious actresses. Is that a joke? How is that fair? How is that fair? Meanwhile, like, Taraji got to, like, move as a single mom to L.A. when she's 26 with, like, $500 in her pocket. Like, how is that fair? How is that fair? How is that fair? How is that fair? Saying my read everything. You know, if they gave us reparations, America would be shut down for years. Mary J, he said Mary J, right? A black man got to fly to get somewhere a white man could walk to. No, that wasn't Method Man. I think he just had on the same outfit. It was the guy that he made him strip. The, he's talking about the guy that shot um, Sincere. It's the guy that he made him strip naked in the basement. He just also had on like a white camel outfit because it was 1999. I had a white teacher that told me that her family's wealth is traced back to slavery. That's how she was able to go to school. How am I a black person supposed to catch up? And we celebrate those criminals, get movies made about them and everything. Right, those white criminals. The slumlords and the bootleggers and the niggas running speakeasies. Like, pe white people love that shit. They love it. They make all type of movies about it. They eat it up. But, like, niggas are drug dealers. Lock those niggas up. Lock those drug dealers up. They don't want us to acquire wealth the same way they did. They don't want us to acquire wealth at all. Not right there. Look at the difference of how they portray prohibition and mafia shit versus drug dealing and black crime. Black crime. I see you put quotations. Yes, white crime is definitely glorified in the media. They justify it in every way, shape, or form. Our society reframes money as fiscal responsibility, therefore being poor could be reframed as fiscal irresponsibility. It's insidious, especially when coupled with the amnesia towards the BS. Exactly. Let me, I'm going to screenshot that. That's a good comment. My movie just went off. Oh, the man that Keisha killed. I thought that was just one of the other boys that was, like, looking for... I don't think that was Method Man. He kind of did look like Method Man, but I don't think that was him. That was just, like, one of the other people that was looking for Tommy. My movie went off. So, I have a list of the shit that you guys said you wanted to watch last week. We don't have to pick now if you guys don't want, but... You guys said... Whichever one was the one that had Usher in it, the faculty. The faculty, yeah, that was the one that had Usher. Biker Boys, Bring It On... She's All That with Little Kim and Gabrielle Union and the faculty got suggested last week. You guys want to think about that? Biker Boys, Bring It... They were all suggested. Biker Boys, Bring It On, She's All That, and the faculty were all suggested. I see one vote for She's All That. I'm going to keep track. Which I guess whichever one wins first. I see one vote for the faculty. I see one vote for Bring It On. I see another vote for, Bi I see a one vote for Biker Boys. They're disgusting. They will never give reparations because then it will be fair. They cannot thrive in a fair system. Oh, that's two, three, up, oh, that's four for Bring It On, Bring It On, just one. Five for Bring It On, six for Bring It On, seven for Bring It On, Bring It On, one.
So bring it on it is. Looks like bring it on one and then the faculty and then she's all that. Look, that's what it, and then biker boys. So bring it on and then the faculty and then she's all that and then biker boys. I'm writing it down because I'll be lying. So I'm writing it down so I can remember what order. Because I was like, I know we said we were going to watch You Got Served before Belly. And y'all were like, no, it's Belly first. I was like, y'all are lying. So it's going to be Bring It On and then The Faculty and then She's All That and then Biker Boys. So yeah, we're going to hit that, uh, that early 2000s kick for the next three Sundays before we do Biker Boys. Uh, well, if you guys decide you want to re-vote next week, you can, but clearly everyone already voted on Bring It On, so we're definitely going to do Bring It On next week, so Bring It On next week. Bring It On next week. See you guys next week. It was fun. Y'all did it. Crossed the line today, so I'm proud of you, so, uh, so Bring It On for sure next week, and I think Bring It On is on Netflix, so we should all be able to, like, tune in and watch. So, see you guys next time. Peace. Bye-bye. Thanks again for doing Super Chat. Woo!